chronic cervicitis. This may follow an acute attack or the onset may have been so chronic in character that the patient has not been aware of its existence. The history is often of very little value and the diagnosis, even after a most careful examination, may only be presumptive, unless perhaps some complication as salpingitis arises, which proves the diagnosis. Gonococci are often not found in the discharge, this discharge being composed only of pus and epithelial cells. In these cases, an examination should always be made just after menstruation, as the mucosa at this time is more congested and the desquamation of the mucosa favors the throwing off of the deeper glandular secretions and the gonococci which have penetrated to these deeper structures. The fact that the discharge after menstruation may be more infectious than at other times has undoubtedly given rise to the popular superstition that gonorrhea may be contracted from intercourse during the menstrual period. Symptoms. The usual symptom is a discharge. This may be very slight and be practically the only symptom, or painful urination may be found if urethritis is present also. There may be disturbances of menstruation if the endometrium is involved. Again, sterility may be the only complaint. Examination usually shows a coexisting urethritis with involvement of Skene's glands and the maculae gonorrhoicae. However, occasionally these are all absent and the one pathological condition found is around the cervix. Here the mucosa may be somewhat reddened and a discharge varying in type be found. It may be thin and watery or thick and purulent, yellowish or green in color. There may be slight eversion of the cervical mucous membrane through the external os and erosions which bleed more or less easily may be found on the cervical or posterior vaginal mucosa. The cervix may appear swollen and boggy and tiny varicose vessels may be seen around the os. Diagnosis. If erosions are present on the cervix, even if the gonococcus be absent, a diagnosis can be made by the complement fixation test. Treatment. Local applications to the cervix are especially indicated. The cervix should be brought into view by means of a bivalve speculum and then carefully examined. If erosions are present, they should be wiped off with sterile cotton and then touched up with silver nitrate, 10%, Churchill's tincture of iodine, or plain tincture of iodine. Care should be taken not to carry any instrument up through the internal os, as in this way the endometrium may be infected. It is often advantageous to immerse the entire cervix in a solution so as to reach all the parts involved. The Ferguson speculum is useful for this, and it should be inserted until the cervix is in view, the solution poured in, and the speculum partially withdrawn. By so doing, the cervix is dipped into a pool of solution and allowed to remain there for a number of minutes, five to 10 minutes. And then the speculum is pushed into the original depth and depressed when the fluid is easily drained out. Silver solutions most frequently used are silver nitrate, three to 5%, Protergol, 2 to 10%, Argyrol, 10 to 25%. In some cases where the tissue seems boggy and congested and the inflammatory condition is not so marked, installation of zinc salts in the manner described above is useful. After the cervix has been treated in one of the above mentioned ways, a tampon of boroglycerin, 10%, or ichthyol and glycerin, 10%, may be used. Or a dry tampon sprinkled with Aristol, Dermatol, or iodoform may be placed against the cervix. In cases where the discharge from the cervix is very profuse, it is better not to use tampons at first, as they may dam back the discharge against the cervix. In the presence of a vulvitis, it may be necessary to tampon, and if so, special precautions should be taken. See page 151. In chronic cervicitis, the above treatment should be given in the office at first three times a week and gradually reducing the frequency of treatment as the symptoms improve. Douches should be ordered as home treatment at first once or twice a day and later two or three times a week. In some cases, the treatment may be hastened by the home use of suppositories containing various medicaments, ichthyol, protergol, zinc, etc., these can be inserted by the patient every other night or less often. 
The solutions for douching should be mild antiseptics or astringents as used in the office.